Liverpool. Oh. Leeds Runners are defending their crown. And what a moment for Halifax Rugby League. Oh, oh. Austin is through and Warrington dominating. Ta-da! Great try for the Robins. And as the Giants take the points home. And this it is a poor lad. Welcome to the last tackle. Shocks last week in the Betfred Super League. And we're going to look ahead to an England fixture as they prepare for the World Cup, which of course is this year in England. And alongside me is a man who knows all about rugby league. He was in the Sky <laughs> commentary box and studio for absolutely years. Sky Sports voice of rugby league, Eddie Hemmings. Thank you very much, Mark. Nice to see you again. Nice yeah, good to see, to see you. you. Right, we'll talk England later. Shocks galore this week. There were, and probably, um, and Warrington fans won't like me for saying this, probably the Warrington win against Saints at Saints was the biggest of them. From all accounts, uh, it was the fourth successive victory for Warrington against St Helens, home and away. Now, Steve-O and I remember vividly the Kieran Cunningham try, the Sean Long drop goals, the last minute, last second victories for Saints against Warrington in the past. Warrington just could not beat them. Now they don't seem to be able to lose to them. But what a game it was. The boys on the telly were saying it was a classic. I wouldn't say it was a classic. To me, a classic is 38-22 or 38-32, yeah. something like that. But for defence, hard-nosed defence from Warrington, fantastic. St Helens didn't play well. You have to ask yourselves, did St Helens not play well because Warrington played so well and defended them out of it, but the Saints dropped so much ball. It was a very un-St Helens-like performance. But take nothing away from Warrington. Believe me, in the town now, they're getting ready for Old Trafford because this is their year. <laughs> uh, let's look back <laughs> at the headline clash of St Helens versus Warrington. Lachlan Coote then to break the deadlock with 13 minutes gone. Right in front of the posts. It's the ball away. It's a really good pass as well for Lynham. And Lynham's got support back on the inside. Brilliant try, Warrington. Ben Curry is going to touch down. First 40. That is good for. They'll want more of a gap, more of a margin between themselves and the champions. Kick. Austin again, that back fair. forward to Charlie, Charlie back on the inside, Ratchford. Oh, he's called it. As soon as he throws that ball, Austin goes four by a metre. Grace, Hill Farge, now it's Batchelor, and it's just to find Amor, and now Parsi. Squeezes the ball out brilliantly for Lomax, Kyle Amor, now Batchelor again, St Helens are going in here, are they? Oh, a metre short. Theo Farge again. Lomax oh. gets the ball away. Makins and spectacular in the corner, but it's gone forward. Toby King. Toby King only has got eyes for it. Yeah, there we are then. So it finished. Um, Warrington 6, St Helens 2. And just watching that back again, it wasn't a bad match, was it? I mean, I know they were the highlights, but it wasn't a bad match. A couple of forward passes for both sides. Um, but um, I was with Mike Rush briefly on Friday at uh, Mossy Masoy's walk from uh, Wigan to Lee. And um, Mike was not a happy bunny. He, uh, he doesn't like losing at the best of times. He hates losing to Warrington and Wigan, the big players, the big teams. Um, and I think he agreed with me that Saints were not quite at the races for some reason. Don't know why. I don't know why. I think we ought to credit Warrington, actually, with the, the defensive play. They were, they were outstanding. They really were outstanding. But Warrington need to kick on from this now, don't they? Well, they do. And, of course, it'll be very interesting on Thursday because they've got so many players in the England match that we're going to talk about later on. They're obviously going to have a weakened side out against Lee. And again, at the, the walk, we were talking to a few of the Lee uh, players and, and staff, and they believe, although the result the next day didn't actually 
show that. They believe that they are gaining in confidence and a win or two is not too far away. Now, if you're going to play Warrington at Warrington, the day before an England international is the best thing for you because I think I'm right, Warrington have got five in the England squad yep. and five key players as well. So it might be a good time for Lee. Let's wait and see. But Warrington, if they have squad depth, prove it on Thursday and that really will silence a few doubters. That's two defeats for Saints, obviously, mm. like away at Catalan. I mean, that was a surprise, though, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think both of them were. Um, I think Christian Wolfe has got the defence spot on again this year. Um, a lot of St Helens supporters you talk to say that they're not playing with the flair of the old days. They're not playing with the flair of Justin Holbrook and Daniel Anderson. Okay, I think Christian Wolfe's put so much emphasis on defence. On defence, as so many Australian coaches do. But those two also had, they might have had different players, they might have had, you know, more skillful players. Who knows? I, I, I'm not a great judge of a, who is a skillful player who isn't. I, know, I think I know what a good player is, what a good player looks like. The coaches have to work with what they've got. I'm not saying that Saints are struggling in terms of personnel. But this year, for some reason, and I don't know why, they don't seem as red hot in attack as they do in defence. Because I think on... Uh, the weekend, Warrington had the best attack and St Helens had the best defence prior to the match. And look what happened. Warrington defended for but their I, lives. I think, you know, you can maybe play this back in October and I'll be proved wrong, but I'll be very, very surprised if the Saints aren't there at the grand final end of well, the Well, the Challenge Cup, Mike, will play an important part in this now because, uh, when is it, 17th of July, I yes. think? Um, the COVID crisis hasn't gone away, as we all know. Um, they might lose matches, which in some ways would be a blessing for the playing squad because they must be almost running on empty now. And they will have the Challenge Cup at the back of their mind. They must do. They, they're bound to. Players don't want to miss out on Wembley um, and they don't want to turn up at Wembley fatigued. Um, the amount of matches that are being played at the moment, the players can be excused for being fatigued. But I rather fancy that Saints will be digging deep into their squad over the next three or four weeks to keep the star players fresh for Wembley. So it might, you never know. That, that it's all about percentages now, isn't it? This year again. So you never know that they might miss out. And, and the people at Saints, Mike Rush, will have none of this talk that we've all been saying since day one. Saints are going to win the lot. Have none of it. None of it. We've had some good news about the Betfred uh, Challenge Cup final. It's also the 1895 final that day as well between Featherstone and York City Knights. There'll be 45,000 fans at Wembley. It's part of the events research programme. St Helens versus Castleford. Saints not won it in two, since 2008. Castleford not won it since 1986. We're finest in 2014. I think it's going to be a cracking final. And 45,000 fans is a hell of a boost for us, isn't it? They'll make a noise, won't they? They will make a noise. That'll be fantastic. Um, and that'll be the biggest crowd in this country for a rugby league match whew, for two years, which is, is brilliant to see them back in there. Um, it's the 17th of July, so it's before all the lockdowns are lifted. Um, as you say, it's a test event, but I heard on the radio coming in today that all the test events, including the Betfred World Snooker Championship, all the test events that we've had have proved yeah. most successful. Well, no, obviously, no I was at the snooker, yeah. as you know. It was so well organised. No spike in, in cases yeah. as a result. So, you know, we, we just might, we just might, fingers crossed everybody, we just might have a full house at Old Trafford for the grand final. Yeah, 45,000 for the Betfred Challenge Cup final. There's going to be 60,000 of the final for the Euros and the semi final. So, fingers crossed. Look, I know we're not out of the woods yet, but it just no. feels like we're going in the right direction. But 45,000 for the Betfred Challenge Cup. So, looking forward to that. Uh, right, we've had a look back at Saints versus Warrington. Let's have a look at the rest of the action from the Betfred Super League. McShane with a teasing kick here for Trinity. Miller. Miller throws one dummy. Throws another dummy. Connect. Nothing to choose as Vitautia races through the middle. Rampaging run from Peter Vitautia. Flings the pass out. Turner is there. Turner is quick. Turner is strong. Has Yorkshire neighbours. Richardson. Delicate kick. Spilled. In there for Wakefield, desperate defence from Trinity, Watts, Turner, 
turn up from a tout here. All goal. Lin. Lino. Disguise kick, clever kick. Oh. And it's been taken by Jacob Miller. And he was going to score there, but somehow the Giants have held him out. And Akers goes. And Akers might just have punched in there by O'Brien. Edwards, that's a beautiful dummy, lovely offload. Oh, Adam O'Brien was absolutely clobbered. Oh, it's a red card. A red card. So Aiden Caesar steps up, sweeps it through. That door, a six point buffer. As half time looms, deck pattern makes no. That time Yates. That Caesar quickens it up nicely. Oh, that's a brilliant line. Back on the inside for Warner. Back it goes, Chris Atkin rattles that one, and that's a one-point lead for Salford. Thoroughly deserved, smart play there by Salford as they take the lead. Marcel now will play the ball, he's coming back to Takarangi. Takarangi looping ball over the top, and they are going to score! Overs, fire the ball to Lewis. Lewis kicks across the field for Ryan Hall and Sean Kenny Dow. Ryan Hall has got it! And wants it quickly. We'll get the pass away to Lulawai. They're going to attack that edge. They've got numbers if they can execute here, Wigan. The ball through hands, out to the touchline, back on the inside. And Gildart will score. Ball now goes to Bateman, who's playing a little bit more centrally. Here, Smith kicks out wide. Wigan are through the line. Can they regather? They will. Ball back on the inside. It's going to be another try, surely. Either side, are they going right? No, they're coming short side here. Surely the little grubber kick through for Quinlan, who catches it and will score underneath the post. That could be the match winning try for Hull Kingston Rovers. Brilliant line. How to. To Connor now joining the line. He'll go on his own, you know. No, Woodward. Certainly not. Here they go. Lee, can they make Hull FC play? Great opportunity to hit back. And a brilliant offload, and they will go. Pull it past to Jake Connor, who's loading up on the left hand side. Panu has got ball and all day. He still gets the offload away. Little kick through. It's a brilliant quick play the ball, and he's straight on it as well. He's Reynolds. This is real danger. They're loaded up on the far side. It's going to be another try. Oh, it should have been. That's brilliant defence from Lee. They're still going though towards the line. Have they got the ball? They have already got it three times. Can they find a fourth try? It's a lovely work play. From JL without having to do anything to, uh, to force the ball back. And another another offload, another offload. Swift. Swift. Oh, Swift by name. There he goes. Swift by nature. Second of the game. Oh, He's been involved in everything, but here they go without him back inside. Savelio hungry for another try out the back door. Bit of Harlem Globe trotters from Andre Savelio. And they keep, oh, what a try this could be. They're going to score under the post. It's brilliant from Hull FC. Yeah, big performance from Hull. Still no wins for Lee. That was 64 22. Lee are at Warrington uh, this week. Uh, two standout results for me. First of all, Hull KR at Wigan. And Ryan Hall seems to be loving it back here, doesn't he? He does, and I'm reliably informed from my little ball friend in Australia that the centres in the NRL would not pass to him. He didn't score a try in the NRL with his time with the Roosters. He's come back here and he looks exactly what he is, a world-class winger once again. Um, and another try, leading the uh, try-scoring charts in the Betfred Super League, of course, isn't he, Ryan Hall? And Jordan Abdul rocketing up the Man of Steel voting table as well. Hull KR are going really, really well. They were wooden spoonish last year once Toronto had been uh, seen off. Um, now they're in the top six. So they're knocking on the door of the playoffs at the moment. They've got some big tests coming up. They're not playing this weekend because of the COVID crisis. They, they won't go to Saints, which is a shame because we would have seen the, how good they are and where the Saints could bounce back. But they're, they're doing well, Hull Kingston Rovers. Hats off to them. And first win in 12 years at Wigan or against Wigan, I think. So fair play to them. At Wigan as at well. At Wigan, yeah. It's always I couldn't a big believe result. It. When, when I looked at the phone on Friday and I thought... Hulkingston Rovers have beaten Wigan. You know, everyone must have been scratching their heads. But um, should Wigan be really pushing the boat out for George Williams? Should they have never allowed him to go under this legal agreement that they've got? You know, there's a, a marquee player, if ever I saw one. Do they need him? Do they need George Williams? Too late was the cry because they've said, we're waiving this legal clause we've got on you. You can go to another Super League club. 
So, interesting for Wigan. Um, let's see what happens. And the other standout result for me was Salford mm. at Huddersfield. Salford were really struggling just to one win and then to come out nine, eight winners against your old, your old coach, Ian Watson, as well, of course. Exactly. And doing it with 12 men for much of the game because they had, <laughs> they had James Greenwood sent off. I think it should have been Dan Sargentson, and I think the disciplinary committee have agreed he's got a three-match ban. Dan Sargentson now. It's a case of mistaken identity by the referee. I, I know that uh, Barry McDermott and Jim Mills, for instance, used to go to the disciplinary committee in Leeds and always claim mistaken identity when they'd been sent off. But that was a, a clear mistake by uh, the referee. I think it's Scott Michalowskis. And, and they tried, apparently, on the sideline, Huddersfield, to let the officials know that the, they'd got it wrong. And Ian Watson... Um, annoyed because the better player, Sargentson, stayed on the field for the match and they, of course, suffered, he believes, because of that. But you can take nothing away from Salford for a, a, a gutsy performance like that against Huddersfield. And you, you say it's significant, it is, for another reason. It might be the day when Lee, and it grieves me to say this because... I don't know whether you know, but I was involved in the Lee video that helped to get them in to the Super League. And it is a, a Super League town. It's a Super League facility. Got them in at the last minute. They're now two wins behind the rest. And I thought the way Salford were going, if Lee could beat Salford at some stage between now and the end of the season, that just might be their lifeline. They've now got to get two, possibly three wins. And in 11 starts... They haven't got one. Time is running out for Lee. Time is running out for Lee. So significant for Salford, massively. And Richard Marshall must be so relieved because he looked like a man yeah. possessed. He was haunted last time I saw him on the TV. It was a, an awful display. But they came out of that game against Huddersfield with great credit, uh, a gutsy show, and uh, a drop goal from, from Atkin to win it. I know a, a guy in Australia smiling from ear to ear because... He loves his field goals, does Steve-O. He loves the drop goals. Let's turn our attention to the internationals. So, it's a huge weekend. Uh, we've got uh, the uh, women's England team are playing Wales at Halliwell Jones on Friday. Then we've got the men's team against the Combined Nations All-Stars. And then the wheelchair team are in action in Sheffield on Saturday against Wales. Because all these make up the World Cup at the end of the season, which is going to be cracking. Right, let's deal with the obvious. Why is the Super League matches this weekend as well? I can't answer you that. Um, you have to scratch your heads. I suppose in an ideal world, it should be a free weekend and the internationals should dominate. We are not in ideal situations now. We've lost another match this weekend. We've lost three in the past two weeks. The teams are having to play catch-up. They've got to play a certain amount of matches if they're going to get into the top six to get a chance of going to Old Trafford for the grand final. I understand all that. But it does seem to me that the, the Super League is, is not playing ball internationally because we all agree if England do well in the World Cup, the Betfred yep. Super League goes like a rocket next year. Yeah, you know, I, and, I've, uh, I've spoken to the Super League today about it. Okay. And obviously, it's not ideal... But just because of the fixer congestion, they had to put the fixtures in this week. But the teams obviously released their players. And what obviously, on top of all of this, is COVID. Yes, exactly. And obviously, you know, players are out isolating at the moment. So it has been very, very tough. I mean, everyone, unfortunately, we knew we were going to come back to an imperfect world. We did. Um... Strangely enough, as I mentioned earlier on, the one team that might be rubbing their hands about this is Lee. Yeah. This, this could be a moment for them to get one of the wins that they desperately, desperately need. Warrington with, with five in the international uh, squad for England. Um, so I suppose really Warrington could, could apply for a, a postponement, couldn't they? But they're probably looking at it and saying, look, let's get another game out of the way because we can't... When, with everything that's going on, we can't have another game that we've got to squeeze in somewhere between now and the end of the yeah. season. They're already making the Challenge Cup final weekend, which again in the past has been sacrosanct. They're already making matches being played oh, no. over that Friday weekend night. as it, well. No, it's an imperfect it, world we've come back to totally because of COVID-19. Exactly. But this is what 
playing for England means Sam Tompkins and Tom Davis have driven themselves from the south of France to the England training camp. I hope they get a game. <laughs> Could you imagine if they no, don't No, but play? that's what it means, pulling on the England shirt from in the World Cup, yeah. Definitely. Well, I, it... I think Sam knows that he is the number one. I think Sam Tompkins knows that he is Sean Wayne's number one come hell or high water. If he gets a nasty injury, well, obviously, he would have to rethink that. But I think Sam knows he is number one. Now, the interesting thing from that is that Jake Connor has apparently put his hand up for the international yep. all-stars. They've announced their squad. It's a strong squad. It's a strong it's a squad. You've got squad. Jackson Hastings in there, Aidan Sazer. So if you're going to Halliwell Jones, you're seeing some top quality players. This is, this is I was going to say, it's not a training run for, for, for England, but it is in many ways because Sean, he must have been kicking his heels, Sean Wayne, for the past 18 months, Wait, waiting for this game. This is his first game. game. It's his first game. And he's, he's only his... got one more game before the World Cup. Yes. He's got a friendly against Fiji. That's right. So this is vitally important for him to get systems in place, see how the players are going. But the fact that Jake Connor is on the other yeah. side now for the internationals, you know, this is Jake Connor's chance to show Sean Wayne that he is making a mistake, that he is what he has said earlier on in the season. He is the number one, number one in Super League at the moment. So a great chance for him. He's very much in the shot window as Jake on Friday night. It could make, it could make for an interesting viewing. It really could. Well, we are going to get an England game on Friday night. That is definite. It's a strong squad as well. And the uh, Combined Nations All-Stars, we've got a strong squad as well. So this is going to be a good test. Let's hear from the England coach, Sean Wayne. Sean, you're England head coach and it's game week. Has your career been leading up to this moment? It has, yeah. It's when, when I think where I come from and to be head coach of my country, I'm, I'm um, very, very proud Englishman. And, you know, to lead my team out on Friday is exciting times. There's a lot of hoops to jump through and a, you know, a lot of problems with player availability and on, on both sides of this match. But ultimately, once we get to kick off on, on Friday, it's going to be international test match football, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And to be honest, Lewis, it's the same now. I've, I've, we've, we've I've worked with the players beforehand and regardless of what club you're from, um, it's, this is England town and we're leading up to a massive game before a huge World Cup, so it's a, a lot of stake and the players are loving it. This is obviously not where you thought you would be 18 months into your tenure as head coach, but now that you are able to get the players on the field and have a look at them and you know, get a good look at them on Friday night as well, do you think you'll know a lot more about where you're at in terms of winning the World Cup in yeah. November? Yeah, absolutely. And, and the, the, the quality of the sessions um, of the, with the England team, what I've had so far, has lent me, you know, made put my mind at ease. Because the quality of players, what we've got, they just get things easier. I've given them things they've never done before. And uh, there's that much quality, they just, they just do it easy. And that's, that's been the biggest one for me. So having them all together, playing on Friday against a, against a tough team, it's going to be game on. And obviously, plenty of players in that group that you've worked with before at Wigan, but are you seeing a different side to some of those boys now that it's international time? A few of them putting their hand up a little bit more? Yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, against the majority, well, all of them in, in the past. So I do know them very, very well, not personally, but the spirit, you know, the, how they get on with each other. The, the desire to play for England is, is immense. Sam, Tom Davis drove a long way to get here, 16, 18 hours. And that shows what it means to, to play for England. There we are, we said that. Hmm. We did. Driven themselves. Yeah, no. They want to put on a shirt. They want to win the World Cup for England. I mean, they were so close oh. in 2017. We what were. an ankle tap away. We were, weren't we? And um, that's been the story of international rugby league for the best part of 50 years, since the last Ashes win in Australia and since the French World Cup win in 72, when, the, you know, the... They drew the final but got there on, on countback or try scored or something like that. So it's been a long, long time, but we've got a man there as the England coach. You know, you, you're chopping him half and he'd be red, white and blue, wouldn't he? There's no question about Or red and white now because he's the England coach. There's no question about that. Oh, he's, I, he's a I remember that bulldog. interview you did yeah. in his final week at Wigan. An emotional interview, very good interview. Mm. He, he loves rugby league. He loves it with a passion. And he, and he loves, loves his country. He loves his country and he loves his players with a passion. Uh, I remember asking him when he said that he was leaving Wigan, what was it like telling the players? And he, he got very, very emotional about that moment. Um, 
I thought at the time he didn't really want to leave, but he said, and has continued to say afterwards, it was 100% his decision. Then he went across to the dark side, and now he's come back into the light again. <laughs> so, you know, we've got him back, which is the most important thing. He is a man-manager par excellence. He can, he can stoke the fuel, I'm sure, for Friday night. On the other side, there's Tim Sheens, who isn't turning up just to give Sean Wayne the easy ozy test match that he hopes, I'm sure, that he's going to get. Tim Sheens also is a winner of the highest quality. He will want to bow out because he's going back to, to Australia at the end of the year. He will want to bow out with a victory. And what better way to yet another tick on the most immaculate coaching record that Sheens has got, 20, 30 years of it, to say, I coached the international all-stars to a victory against England on their own soil. That would be a marvellous achievement for him. And he's coached at international level before. And just putting aside all the difficulties of getting this game on and COVID and all that's going on in the world, this is a very, very important test for England building up to that World Cup. You said before they've got this and Fiji and that's it. Then they're in the World Cup cauldron in October, November. It's not the best preparation, you have to say that. We lost the Ashes series last year, which would have been brilliant for Sean. How he has managed to keep his patience and look as enthusiastic as he did on, the, on that interview there, I don't know, because he must, be, he must, be, must have been bursting to get on the, the training field with his players. He's hardly had them together even for, for gatherings because of the COVID crisis. You know, they've been called off been called off. Been now he's got them. Now he's got them on the training field. He's putting his systems in place. And you look down the, the team that he's likely to field. I mean, it's not a bad side. And he's still not got his NRL players. I mean, there's no way, no way the NRL players are going to be allowed to come right round the other side of the world for, for what in terms is a friendly international. So, but when he gets his NRL players in there as well, I think we've got more of a chance of winning the World Cup than the England football team have got of winning the Euros. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll find out tonight what happens at the Euros. We do know England have qualified, but uh, uh, I'm not sure it'll be plain sailing against the Czech Republic. Let's get more build-up from the England Rugby League camp and hear from John Bateman. John, for a long time, opportunity to put on an England jumper again, that must be exciting for you. Yeah, massive mate, obviously, like I said, um, been a while now, obviously, with what's going on, we're flying in the country, especially over here itself, it's been a tough time for the country, so it'll be good to go out there and represent this country and do it proud, hopefully. Working with Sean again, of course, big part of your career, that must be nice for you. Yeah, it's good mate, it's good to see him back, I think he's, he's happy to be back on the field as well, I think he's been stuck in office, been stuck behind the laptop himself, so yeah, it's good mate. Familiar faces and familiar voices, it's a real good to be back, mate. And this is the, the kind of first public step, I guess, in winning the World Cup at, at the end of this season. How important are these sessions and then obviously games like Friday night in terms of getting to know each other and, and getting the wheels turning for England? No, it's, uh, they're massive, they're massive. I've really, probably this is one thing that I've, I've really missed, obviously, throughout um, my international career. We've not really had a chance to do this, so it's fantastic to, to get them underway and obviously get, get the boys meeting together. It's always good to see some familiar faces and, and it's always good to get some combinations going together. And like I said, mate, it's a massive step forward, obviously, to, towards the World Cup. And, and anything we can do to progress is even further will be fantastic for us. And it's going to be test match standard isn't it on, yeah. on Friday the team they're together 100% and that's what we're expecting and I think that's what the boys here are really excited to do for us there's some, some new faces and we're looking forward to seeing how we go and you're, you're a little bit older more experienced than, than you have been when you've been in England setups before does that change your role are you a bit more of a, a leadership figure now in the squad yeah probably met if I'm honest with you probably a few uh, leaders retired and stuff like that and it's going into yeah. going into different avenues and stuff. So yeah, obviously that I've set up and quite a few of us in, in the role. Obviously me, Sam Gailey, Faz. So yeah, it's, it's good for us, mate. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, John Bateman, I, look, I'm, I'm looking forward to watching this on Friday night. I am. And where will John Bateman play? Will he play loose forward? Will he play second row? Will he play in the front row? Will he be one of the knucklers in the front row? If you look at the if you look at the the possible team, I mean, I, I've made a note. What do I know? I mean, fair play, what do I know? But I've just looked at the names on the paper. You've got, for me, you've got Philbin, Knowles, Bateman and Westerman all vying for the 13 jersey for England on Friday night. That just shows the strength and depth that we've got. You've got the Man of Steel, Paul McShane and Daryl Clark vying for the hooking role. 
I think the I think the back just about backs just about pick themselves. I mean, to, if Sam Tompkins has driven 18 hours to get here, he's played, so he <laughs> he'll be full back. Uh, Makinson, um, Davis on the other wing, he's done the 18 hour drive as well. He'll be playing in the centres. Well, Ratchford, I would imagine, and Reese Lynn. I think I'm right in saying he's the only recognised centre, other, uh, yeah, the only recognised centre that I can see in in the squad. So surely Reese Lynn will play, unless Sean does what the England coaches have done in the past and switch people around. Remember, Skullthorpe the loose forward became Skullthorpe the standoff. Kevin Sinfield likewise. You know, it'd be very interesting to see what Sean's final lineup is and who is on the bench. Ash Handley, I suppose would be classed as a centre as well at the moment. It'll be, first of all, fascinating to see his starting 13 and who's on the bench, and then just to see how they, how they go against, uh, against this lot. And mention Jake, Jake Connor, trial match. The other fellow who will be out to prove Sean Wayne wrong is Jackson Hastings, the co-captain of the international All-Stars. And they've got an England winger in their squad called Jermaine McGilberry. Played in the World Cup final four years ago. Final for us. So I don't think it's going to be a trial as such, uh, but I think it might be a trial if those three star and Sean might have to rethink. Let's wait and see. So, yeah, for all the talk about it, we've got two very, very good sides on Friday night now uh, for this international. Really looking forward to it. There is some Super League matches on Thursday. You've got Castleford versus Catland Dragons, Wakefield. Uh, versus Wigan, Warrington versus Lee. Um, Salford versus Leeds has moved to one o'clock Sunday and hopefully Hull versus Huddersfield will go ahead. Look, we've discussed it. It's not ideal the Super League matches, no. but the world we live in, we've just had to squeeze some in. And although the Super League clubs can be under a little bit of criticism because they've organised this round of matches around the international, you've also got to say fair play to them. You know, they've released their players exactly. for the England and squad. And look, we never thought there'd be players in isolation at this no. stage when we did the fixture list, whatever it no. was. No. I mean, it should have been all over on Monday, shouldn't it? Yeah. Summer solstice, you know, Freedom Day, whatever you want to call Hull and St. Helens yeah. is off. Yes, exactly. Exactly. It's a shame that that is off, as I said earlier, for Hull KR. We'd see exactly where they are. But at least we are talking rugby league and we've got an international fixture to look forward to on Friday, like we say. And good luck to the uh, women as well. They kick us off versus Wales. And good luck to the uh, wheelchair team as well who play in Sheffield on Saturday because it is an inclusive sport and they are all part of this World Cup we're looking forward to at the end of the season. Right, before we finish, it's time for Try of the Week. Hello and welcome to the Our League Try of the Week. I'm Dave Woods. Let's have a look at this week's contenders. Try one this week comes from the Wakefield against Castleford game. And this was a classy try. Peter Matortia very much involved in the build-up with that cross-field run. And when he runs out of space, he finds an able deputy in the wonderful Jordan Turner. What a powerful finish that is. Try two from an eye-catching victory by Hulkingston Rovers at Wigan. Lovely little kickback on the inside from Mikey Lewis. And there is Adam Quinlan to score the try. Try three and Hull turned on the style against Lee, who of course remain without a win this season. But this was fabulous stuff from Hull FC. Too many names to mention because there were so many involved in the build-up. That's a wonderful little flick pass as well. It's eventually finished by Jack Brown, who's there in support to go underneath the sticks. Try four from the Welsh Derby, North Wales Crusaders against West Wales Raiders. Rob Massam is the man who makes the initial break here for the Crusaders. He's got support from Elliot Jenkins with a little pass away and Jenkins with an inside ball full 180 degrees for Matt Reed to race in. Our fifth try comes from a humdinger between York and Batley. This effectively the match winner. Gilmore's chip over the top, taken by Elliot Hall. Somehow they desperately keep it alive because they know they have to score. And Lucas Walshall is in on the end of it, eventually, for a real roof raiser. 
and an emotional one to finish as well. Sam Holsall, who's that day, sadly passed away in the week building up to the game. Sam decided he was going to play, and he scores one for his dad. And you can see what it means. Uh, there we go. Try of the week. Uh, right, just before we finish, tell us what you did last Friday. <laughs> I walked nine and a half miles from... It's not bad for no man. No, it isn't. I've still got the blisters to prove it. Do you want to see? <laughs> uh, nine and a half miles from uh, the DW Stadium in Wigan to the Lee Sports Village for the Mossy Masoy walk and talk for Mossy uh, appeal. Uh, great fun. I mean, the weather was fabulous. Um, I'd like to think I lost a couple of pounds, but I don't think I did, uh, other than in the bucket <laughs> that we were carrying around. Um, Mike Rush was there as well, the CEO of, of St. Helens. Uh, some army guys who were great fun, the um, Queen's uh, Lancaster Regiment. And then when they got over the Pennines over the weekend, they handed on to the Yorkshires. And they're still walking now to, to Hull for a week on Thursday uh, for the whole KR Hull derby. And Mossy himself will walk the ball out. This ball has been signed by yeah. all the captains of the NRL, all the captains of the Super League. It will be a real collector's piece. And let's hope they raise thousands of pounds in an online auction for that. But it was good fun. It really was We've good fun. We've said this a few times before. It just shows what a family sport rugby league is, mm. isn't it? That's true. How everyone rallied around Mossy Masoy. Absolutely. And we, we get to Lee and... Obviously, there are a few people there. I must say, I got there after everybody else because O'Connor and McDermott, who were, they were walking with me, allegedly, they, they were miles ahead of me. Jenna Brooks, you know, they never looked round once. I could have been in the canal or I could have been in a ditch, you know, or a heart attack. Anything could have happened. But the, the army guys got me through. And when we got to leave, people there were a round of applause. And who was standing there waiting to do the next leg from Salford, uh, from Lee to Salford? Um, Mikey North. Uh, Gary Windass yeah. of Coronation Street, one of my heroes. I met him, and uh, he's a big rugby league fan. Isn't he's he? a massive rugby league fan. He's a huge Hulkingston Rovers fan, and I've almost promised him a seat at the grand final mark if Hulkingston Rovers fine. get there. It's not a we, problem. Do you think we can sort that? Well, we've got a lot of rugby before. <laughs> and we're playing well at the moment, but there's a lot of rugby before absolutely, now and then. Absolutely, but it was great fun, yeah. and I, I was delighted to, uh, to to do just a little bit to help to help Mossy. Eddie. Lovely seeing you. And you. Right then, good luck to our three England sides this weekend. And we've got some Betfred Super League action as well. Whether you're going to the game or watching on your sofa, enjoy. for Halifax Rugby League. Oh, Austin is through and Warrington dominating. Great try for the Rollins. And as the Giants take the points home. And this is a full lad. 